Happy holidays from all of us at the Kim Commando Show and Kim Commando Today. This is a replay of Kim Commando Today. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you all next year. I always like to start with something interesting, and here's a headline in the New York Post. Elon Musk says Tesla aims to roll out self-driving cars by year-end. Mm, not a Tesla that would drive itself while you're behind the wheel. We already have that. It's called Tesla's full self-driving package. It used to cost $12,000. They just bumped it up to $15,000 and as an add-on to the car. And it supposedly autonomously makes the car stop at stop signs. It can park, react to traffic, steer on both highways and city streets. Um, what Musk is talking about is a new version that would allow vehicles to drive all on their own. No human occupant required. And let me tell you, I have a Tesla Plaid. I added the self-driving package to the car. It's brand new. But I'll tell you, it can only do the self-driving for about 20 seconds before it becomes one of those self-crashing cars. That thing just does not work at all. And on that happy note, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to Kim Commando today. Because tech never stops, we've expanded my successful weekend radio show about all things digital to weekdays. So you can also get Kim Commando today as a podcast Monday through Friday. Wherever you get your podcasts, just search for Commando with a K. And let me tell you, Kim Commando today, every single day, is just perfect for your walks and your drives, your getting out and about. And again, just search wherever you get your podcasts for Commando with a K, of course. And I'm sure you have at least a few questions about something digital I can lend a hand to. And our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And I'd like to thank Epson for helping to make this show possible. Stop wasting time and money already. Just get an Epson EcoTank cartridge-free printer. Yes, I said cartridge-free with big ink tanks and a ridiculous amount of ink. You can kiss those expensive cartridges goodbye already. I love this. The Epson EcoTank, just fill and chill. Learn more by visiting epson.com slash ecotankkim. All right, let's get started with five things you need to know that's happening right now in the tech world to keep you up to date. And let's start with number one. And in case you haven't noticed, oh, happy days. Yes, the election season is fully underway. And I don't know if you heard, but Google got its way so that your email inbox is just flooded with political spam. If not now, more will come. And there's nothing you can do about it. Here's what happened. Google asked the Federal Election Commission to help them have a program where all political campaign emails would be exempt from spam filters. That's right. It goes right into your inbox. And the FEC agreed. That means that everything and anything sent by any legally qualified candidate or their campaign, any political party, and all political action committees is allowed right through Google spam filters. And if Google's filters work this way, you can bet that all the other email providers will too. Now, of course, the political spam includes an option on the bottom in the email so you can opt out, you can unsubscribe to further mailings. But I don't know if that really works 100% of the time. Well, it hasn't for me. All right, number two on our list is forget the bus. Microtransit is coming. This is so fascinating. Some cities and towns looked at Uber and Lyft's business models and went, wow, that's interesting. I wonder if we could use that same business model for city buses and other traditional public transportation. Thinking, if Uber and Lyft works for riders that don't want a taxi or can't afford a limo, why wouldn't the idea work on a larger scale like public transportation? Well, the answer is it does. Wow. Some cities are experimenting with what's called on-demand public transit, or they're calling it microtransit. It works best in small cities, suburbs, and rural communities. Riders use an app. You schedule a ride using an SUV or maybe a minivan. Other riders can be picked up at the same time, and then they're dropped off at or near their destinations. And it's more cost-effective than operating this huge bus fleet, and riders save time because they're no longer required to just ride all over town on a bus route just to get where they're going. And microtransit is owned by the city, which subsidizes the costs. Now, it's already working well in Austin, Texas, Shreveport, Louisiana, and Valdosta, Georgia. And to deal with the high price of gas, public transportation systems are also looking at alternative fuels, including grasses and herbs. Now, the program has had some failures, but on the bright side, at least the buses run on time. <laughs> Get it? Time? All right. Sorry about that. Uh, number three in our list, the wrong way to use an Apple AirTag to track down stolen things. Apple AirTags, you know what those are, the coin size tracking devices priced around 25 bucks each. They can help you find stolen property. But remember, there's a right way and a wrong way to get that property back. An example of the wrong way, a man in New York tracked his stolen motorbike to a nearby deli. He hid an Apple AirTag in the bike seat. So 
tracked down the air tag, confronted two men outside the deli, and snatched the bike back. But the two thieves tracked the man down a short time later. Remember, there was an Apple air tag hidden in the bike's seat. They punched him, they kicked him, they broke his nose, and stole the motorbike back a second time. Now, he said he's lucky this is all the thieves did to him. So the right way to get your property back, call the police, explain you've been robbed, describe what has been taken, tell them the exact location of the air tag, and then just let the police do what they're totally trained to do. Remember that air tags, regardless of who owns them, notifies other iPhones that's nearby, and you never know what the thieves know or how far they'll go to get what they took to get it back. Number four on our list of crypto statistic no one really wants you to know. Uh, remember those TV ads telling you to invest in crypto and Matt Damon saying, fortune favors the brave and making you feel inferior that you didn't invest in crypto? Well, after spending hundreds of millions of dollars on these ads, it turns out Americans weren't that much into it. In reality, the crypto wipeout of 2022 didn't hurt as many people as the media and the news headlines would have you believe. Here's why. There simply weren't that many crypto investors. Pew Research, you can always believe what they say, found a year ago as crypto mania was taking hold, only about 16% of Americans invested. And they didn't invest much. Now a year later, that 16% remains unchanged. The 50 and over crowd, that's the age group that holds the most money to invest in anything. And they wanted nothing to do with crypto, much like the other 84% of America. And as for Matt Damon, yes, the future favors the brave. Just don't confuse the brave with being foolish. I mean, Matt Damon should have known better. He wasn't born yesterday. And finally, last on our list, number five, how not to get rich being a YouTube star. There was a survey that I read recently, and they asked kids between the ages of 16 and 21, what do you want to be when you grow up? They didn't want to be teachers, doctors, bankers, no engineers, no contractors. Over 80% said that when they grow up, they want to be a social media influencer or a YouTube star. That's right. They want to make that cool one in a trillion video that goes viral and makes them a multimillionaire. Well, don't we all? Well, people and companies say that they're going to teach you how to do just this for a fee, of course. And let me say this here at the get-go. Yes, you really can become a YouTube star. You can do that. Or you can become a New York Times bestselling author. Or you could win a ton of Grammys singing or writing songs. Uh, the trick is finding the right video, the right story, a song that will just resonate with the entire world. Now, I don't know if you remember infomercials 20 years ago. They promised to teach you how to become a real estate billionaire. Well, the only ones who made money on the infomercial were the infomercial producers, of course. So now there are hustlers on social media telling you that they're going to take your business to the next level or 10 times over, but you have to buy their package, of course. So keep this in mind. Anytime you see an expensive course claiming to show you how to make money online, how to go viral, how to be a millionaire, I'm not saying that it can't be done. I'm only saying that it's way harder than it looks. I mean, it's, and it's so easy to become paranoid when no one's watching you. And let me tell you about Simply Safe. More than 4 million people trust their home protection to Simply Safe, including me. With Simply Safe, there's always someone looking out for you. Claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off right now with interactive monitoring. But you have to go to this address, simplysafekim.com. Once again, that's simplysafekim.com. All right, coming up, we're going to tell you how you can get free ebooks, the secret best browser for your phone. We're going to talk about the highest Zestimate on your home and what's going on with Netflix. And a popular password management program has been hacked. And of course, we have all of your phone calls here on Kim Commando today. Hey, if you haven't already scored your free Windows or Mac guide, make sure that you go to commando.com slash free guides right now. That's commando.com slash free guides. Special thank you for listening. And speaking of, how about we start with Stephen? Hi there, Stephen. Welcome to the show. Kim, thank you very much. Great to speak with you. Hope you're having a great day and you're going to make my day better. <laughs> okay. By helping me. Yes. Uh, it, it's almost a crazy coincidence that with the a season finale of Better Call Saul, my cable bill went up by 30%. Oh, jeez. And, and I said to myself, once it gets to a certain point, that's it. Because at my office, where I am right now, we have giant TVs with every streaming, everything that you could possibly imagine. So I want to 
come to the office and watch stuff I can, but at home, all I care about is if I can watch like A&E, Fox News, ID, USA, Golf Channel, stuff like that. So I went to the store, I bought the TV, electronic store, and the guy tried to sell me a smart TV. And I said, listen, I'm trying to watch less TV than more TV. So I started looking at Roku and Fire Stick, and I don't understand how that works, but I do know that my TV at home has the ports to do that. So I need your advice on how to move forward the least expensive way possible to get the basic channels that I like and get rid of the cord cable. Yes. Um, I will tell you uh, is that if you call the cable company, and we'll talk about streaming just saying, but if you call the cable company, you say, hey, listen, uh, I'm going to cancel it. And you want to talk to the retention department because mm-hmm. the person who first answers, they don't have the authority to do this. So you call the, and then, so you get through the first person and then you ask for the retention department. And then that's when a, a person should come on the line that has the authority to, to say, all right, we're going to, we're going to keep the old price because we don't want to lose you as a customer. And then they'll, right. and then they'll probably say in a year, I'm going to have to have price increase. So in a year, just put a note in your phone, you know, 11 months from today, just make sure that they don't jack the price up again, because it's a, it's a standard business practice, right? It's easier and more cost effective to keep a current customer than to go get a new customer. So they're operating off of that MO. Okay. That said, if you have the ports on the side, you got a couple of options. Um, first, if you're an Amazon prime member, you, you have the fire TV stick and that gives you movie shows, music, prime video, prime audio. Um, you have Google, they have their Chromecast. It's 30 bucks. And basically what that does is you have access to any streaming service that has an app. So that's another way. But it sounds like from what you just mentioned, you just rattled off a couple of channels. I don't think either one of those are your best choice. Um, Look at the Roku Streaming Stick Plus. Okay. Okay. And you have live news. You have sports. You have the channels you mentioned, A&E. They have pretty much all the streaming services. And how much you pay depends upon which package that you select. So, so you buy the $30 Roku streaming stick plus. So you want the streaming stick plus. That's the important part. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, as I said, then you're just going to name your service and then you're going to have like all the live news and your golf and your sports and all kinds of good things like that. And so this way you don't have to like be that guy, that creepy guy at the office that's watching TV at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. By the, by the way, um, and where I live, you, your daily tech update comes on at 7.35 a.m. Oh, good. Every morning, and I enjoy that. And especially last week, I think, well, constantly you gave some really great tips on how some of the very cool things that Siri can do that I didn't know about. And that was absolutely awesome, and I appreciate that. I oh, always enjoy listening to you. You're sweet. You know what, Stephen, if you can, drop the radio station a note. They'd love to hear that. I will do that. Yeah, that no would be, because that, that, that will really help me out. And if you, so after you get this, if you have any questions, I'm here for you. Just give me a call back, all right? Promise? Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe out there. I will. Thank you, Stephen. Have a good Thank day. Thank you, bye. You too, bye. You know, and speaking of cutting the cable, there are a lot of free services out there, free streaming sites like Amazon Freebie. I don't know if you heard about that. It used to be called IMDb. Got to check it out. And also Canopy, Hoopla, Popcorn Flicks, Voodoo. There's a whole ton of them. We've got a list of 15 free streaming sites over at commando.com. Just search the site for it. All right, Lori, you're up next. Hi there, Lori. Hi, Kim. Thanks for taking my call. You betcha. I really appreciate it. Um. My husband travels and is in the vehicle probably three to six hours a day for work. Mm -hmm. And he streams uh, music and runs out of data. And and I'm not quite sure what to do. Of course, I don't want to buy another phone and just use a phone just for that. So do you have ideas how to accommodate well, streaming. Well, you got a lot of options. What we're going to do is we're going to stop streaming. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and we're going to uh, put music on a thumb drive if you want. And okay. uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to download the music and put it on a thumb drive or download it on his phone. And he can always wipe it out later so he doesn't have extra, you know, doesn't run out of space. 
Um, depending upon the phone, he may even be able to put a, um, a, a little drive next to it. And so what you're going to do is you're going to get the music. So he listens to the music offline. So he's not using any of the data on the phone. And so you download the music or you just, you, depending on which service that you want to use, download the music. And then what's also kind of cute that you could do is you could make him playlists. And then if you wanted to, you could actually add your voice in between the playlists, which I think would be kind of fun. Oh, so you could make, sweet. yeah, so you make a playlist like for, you know, if it's getting near your anniversary or his birthday, or if he's just feeling down and out in Beverly Hills that, you know, you could maybe give him some positive you know, this is why I'm happy. You know, it's that little happy song from the Incredibles. Anyway, so um, if you are, uh, you can, you could try like YouTube music and you can enjoy all the music offline and you can download your favorite songs right onto your phone. And then you just need to reconnect to the internet once every 30 days to maintain the downloads. Now, if you're an Amazon Prime member is that they have, yes. am, they have Amazon music playlists for uh, offline, what they call offline playback. And you get, I think when you sign up, you get like three months free. And then after that, it's $8 a month. And so instead of blowing through the music is that you can either a put together your own playlists and music and put it on a thumb drive. And I'm sure if it's a recent car is that there's some place to plug a USB drive. Normally it's in the middle console or sometimes in the glove box. And he can just listen to music that way by choosing media off of the uh, off of the menu inside the car itself. Uh, or you can subscribe. It sounds like you're already a Prime member, so I would say just go to Amazon Music, sign up for that. You get three months free. You can try it, see if you like it. And after that, it's like eight bucks a month. That's what he is using, and that's what's using up all the data. Okay, is, is that, he, okay then he's not. he doesn't have it selected for offline playback. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. so that's what, so he just needs to, you know, fumble around in the account. If you have trouble finding that option, but he just needs to say, I want to listen to this offline and then it won't account for any of his streaming costs and data plan or anything like that. Cause it's going to happen all offline. Again, if you have any trouble with that, just let me know. And I'm happy to find the steps for you. Lori, thank you so much for your call. All right. Speaking of free stuff. Wow. If you've run out of things to watch, you're just tired of scrolling through social media. Have you ever thought about doing something different like reading a book? That's right. Thousands of free eBooks are just a click away because public libraries these days, they don't only let you borrow the old school books. You can download eBooks without visiting a library and you can have up to three weeks to read them. Now to get started, of course, you need an app. The app that I like is called Libby, and you can find it in the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's L-I-B-B-Y. Get it like library, but this one's called Libby. Now, the first time you open the app, it's going to ask you for a library card from your local library. Now, of course, maybe you don't. Uh, the app is going to search for the nearest library, and then what's really sweet is they're going to help you get that library card number. Now, once you have the library card number, that's when you can start browsing and borrowing digital editions of books now, the book titles will depend upon your particular library, but you can find older as well as the latest titles, whether it's fiction or nonfiction that you're after. And you can read your free ebooks using the Libby app, your Kindle or other e-reader device. Again, the app is called Libby. And in case you need more information about that, just go ahead and search the website. You want to stay right where you are. We're going to be talking about the best browser for your phone. I mean, if you're just using the browser that came with your phone, there's something even better. I'll tell you about here on Kim Commando today. All right, before we get into the highest zestimate on your home and how to make that number just go through the roof, let's talk about the best browser for your phone. I mean, you probably spend a lot of time looking things up on your phone, right? Well, you don't have to use the browser that came baked into your phone. Of course, on Android, it's Google Chrome. On an iPhone, Apple Safari. And you probably know that Mozilla Firefox is a great browser. It's clean, it's smart, it's privacy-focused. Uh, also, you can sync up your searches, bookmarks, and more across your desktop to your phone. It works great. But Mozilla has another version of Firefox that doesn't get a lot of attention. And that's the secret you need to know. It's called Firefox Focus. And if you're concerned about your online privacy, just go ahead and put this browser in your phone. When you visit a website, no cookies or browsing history is saved to your device. It blocks third-party trackers and some online ads. So you might be able to browse the web a little bit faster. Now, you can find Firefox Focus in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. But just always remember what Dorothy said in The Wizard of Oz. 
You remember what she said? There's no place like Chrome. Mm, I know. All right. Back to your fantastic phone calls we go. Hello there, Norm. How can I help you out today? What's going on? Hi, Kim. Thanks for taking my call. Very much appreciated. So I'm trying to rest with a problem with some of my colleagues. Um, we are project and portfolio managers, program managers, and we use a lot of email like everybody else. Sure. And we have recently found out about a corporate policy coming out that we will not be able to keep our emails for more than six months. Hmm. And of course, that's instilled rampant panic. Um, <laughs> many of us, I mean, we know that there are a lot of there are a lot of GWIS uh, software applications out there, um, but we actually have gotten around investing in some of those by creative use of our email accounts, uh, you know, organizing data, sure. a hierarchy of, you know, information by, you know, by who the, con what the contract is, who the client is, you know, cause we're, we're contractors mm -hmm. uh, working with external and internal teams. Yeah, you know what, isn't that and so that funny? Know. Isn't that so funny though, Norm, <laughs> that we have all these tools, right? And, and, and it's like e email just doesn't die. You know, you can text as much as you want. You can make a Google doc, but there's still that good old email, isn't it? Oh, oh, you're so true. So many times I I'm on a phone call and then we will say, Hey, let's send an email after this, just so that we're absolutely hundred percent sure that we both heard the same thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> And you know, that, then you can refer back to it and say, yes, that, that is what we said. <laughs> you know, six months is not a long time. Oh, my, no. <laughs> I mean, that was the, the reason for the rampant panic. I mean, you know, we, I mean, there's so much in an email. You know, you have who sent it, who got it, date. who was cc the day at time. It's keyword searchable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That. I mean, I, I tried to imagine if I was going to try to even sift through for the most important things over the last, you know, decades plus that I've been doing this, how many hours it would take to organize that data and try to, you know, move it from the format of being in an email message into some kind of like communication log or something like that. Yeah. And I'm like, there's just no way. No. That yeah. would be a full-time job. Well, you know, there's, there's <laughs> of course, um, you know, there's a pro and con to saving the email. Uh, you, the pro is that you have all this instant information, like you said, keyword searchable. You can refer back to it. You can get reminders of something that didn't happen uh -huh. and three months from now. You can say, tell me if this really got done or whatever it may be. But the con is, is that if there's ever any legal dispute, is that all this emailed can be taken as evidence. Absolutely. And I, I do believe that, our management has an eye to that to some degree because, you know, I mean, like most large industries, we, we can read in the news about how, you know, our rivals have found themselves in that circumstance. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure that our our legal officers, you know, are looking at those sure. kind of things and saying, I don't want to be in that boat. <laughs> well, here's the here's the good news. <laughs> if there is good news. Um, All right. Is that... We, with Microsoft Outlook as the mail client is that that does have the ability to do a manual archive. So what you do is you set this date range and then you can store that old email locally if you wanted to instead of on a mail server. But but it sounds like they want it just to be discarded. Yeah, you're right. I think. I, we, we've discussed this internally and wondered, could we get away with that? I mean, in fact, a lot of the things that we do store are, you know, in, um, you know, they're, they're in the Outlook uh, data storage files. Uh, so they're not, you know, technically in our inbox in a sense, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. just a way to get there. Uh, but the concern from our leadership is that, yes, they're, they're going to consider they wouldn't want us dragging and dropping it into, you know, like, you know, like our, um, our personal drive or, you know, Dropbox onto or a, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, yeah, I right. think, I think they're just going to, they're just asking you just to wipe it out. I mean, I mean, that's what it, that's what it sounds like to most of us. Yeah. I, I don't think, 
you might want to present it to the lawyers and say, is there a way that we could, oh, no, they're not, they're, they don't want anything. They don't want anything. You know, it's, it's unfortunate that you have to make decisions like this. Maybe there's, maybe you and your colleagues can come up with a, some type of thing that, that you get notified if something over six months is going away and that if that is something that you are still working on, that you resend it or something because you need to, you need to have the tools to do your job and they're taking away the tools. And that's where I, I, you know, it, and I know where they're coming from because I, I'm a business mm-hmm. owner. I get that. Sure. sure. But I don't, if, if you've been using email, they get, they have to give you something else. I mean, that's what I would go to. You got to give me some other tool that we can use because this whole idea of just wiping everything out just doesn't make sense for me. You know, Norm, have that conversation. And then I want you to call me back because this is almost like I want to hear part two of what's going on with this. Um, Thank you for your call. I, I appreciate you getting through. You know, there's this old rule about emails. It's called the four D's. I don't know if you heard about this. It gives you four options about how you handle an email. So again, that's four D's. So whenever you get an email, do you delete it? Do you do it? Do you delegate it? Or do you defer it? Okay. The whole goal of this whole 4D method to organizing your email is to make you more productive, but to keep the inbox organized and tidy. I know it's just crazy. I'll tell you what I do. At the end of every year, it's really simple. I just wipe out everything in my inbox. <laughs> I trash it and I start over and I think, all right, well, was that important? You know what? They'll email me again or they'll text me. Hmm. Novel idea. Hey, uh, before we get into secrets to getting the highest zest of it on your phone, it's been brought to you this week by Upside. From cringing at the pump to getting an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is just hitting us all where it hurts. And that's why I started using Upside. I get cash back on every purchase. Upside is this incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or you dine out, which is, yes, everyone. Sounds too good to be true? It's not. I got $20 back just by checking in at my local grocery store. It's really that easy. Just download the free Upside app and use promo code KIM and you're going to get 25 cents or more back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. Next, you can just claim offers for whatever you're buying. You just have to check in at a business, you pay as usual, and then you get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards or loyalty programs, because I checked it out, you can earn three times more cash back with the Upside app. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every single week. So just download the free Upside app, but be sure to use my name, Kim, as a promo code. This way they know that I sent you because you're also going to get 25 cents or more back on every gallon on your first tank of gas. That's 25 cents back for every gallon on your first tank of gas. But you have to use promo code Kim when you download the Upside app. All right, let's talk about getting the highest Zestimate on your home. Because even if your home is not for sale, it has a listing on Zillow.com. And here's how to up your home's estimated value or Zestimate. Now, Zestimate's algorithms compare your home to similar sales in your area. A home's Zestimate, it's always been a sore point of contention. It's either on the mark or it's more likely it's too low. So obviously, you want your home's Zestimate to be as high as possible. So to get started, you have to go to Zillow.com, open an account, and it's free, of course, and you want to claim your home on Zillow and make sure that everything's right. The lot size, the square footage, the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, and more. Just make sure everything's correct. Then you want to get in there. And you want to add any upgrades because these upgrades are going to increase your home's value. So maybe you did a remodel in the kitchen or the bathrooms. Maybe you have a view. Did you add a pool? Maybe a Zen garden? Is the property gated? Now, you can also add photos and videos. But here's where I want you to be really careful because you don't want to divulge too many details because that will give wannabe thieves, you know, easy access to your home. So whatever you do, don't upload a floor plan. Don't post photos that include expensive items. Don't post photos where it shows where the security system is located. I mean, I'll tell you. I tried bidding on a shopping center at a real estate auction lately, and I was outbid at the last minute. I guess the old saying is true. You can't win them all. Ooh, that was bad. All right. Still to come, we have more of your fantastic and great phone calls. We're going to be talking what's going on with Netflix because it looks like they're going to be releasing that ad-supported tier And if you're using a password management program, that's really great. But I got some sad news for you because, well, a popular one has been hacked. So stay right where you are here with Kim Commando today. Hey, 
you can catch The Kim Commando Show here Saturday and Sunday nights, all three hours on WLS or online at WLSAM.com. So you don't want to miss that. And if you're not already following me on social media, what are you missing? What are you waiting for? Come on, stop ghosting me. Whether you're hanging out on Instagram.com slash Kim Commando, that's where I am. Twitter.com slash Kim Commando. Facebook.com slash Kim Commando. Notice the trend. Just make sure that you search me out and make sure you hit that big old follow button. So this way you never, ever miss a post. All right. So Netflix, yes, they're changing. And it's true that they're going to have an ad supported tier. It's going to cost between seven and nine dollars a month. That's according to Bloomberg. Now, depending upon which plan you have, it may you may be now paying up to twenty dollars a month. So here's the deal. They're going to sell approximately four minutes of ads per hour, and they want to show the ads ahead of and in the middle of content. But also, if you're on this lower tier version, you're going to have limited content and no downloads for offline viewing. So you're going to be kind of stuck with that, too. All right. Back to the phones we go with George. Hey there, George. How can I help you out today? Jim, I'm a longtime listener, so I'm almost 20 years. Oh. I first heard you out in Kansas. And after retiring, moved back to North Carolina. And your radio stations have gotten further away. But anyway, the question of the day is when doing extended traveling mm -hmm. and needing to pay bills electronically, how is the best way to do it? Uh, do you use uh, open uh, Wi-Fi at hotels with VPNs? Or do you use a hotspot on a cell phone with or without a VPN? So you want to do, you want to pay your bills, check your bank accounts, good stuff like that. Is that what you're saying, George? Correct. Okay. Um, worst thing you could do is use any type of open Wi-Fi network. Um, Agreed. Uh, I would be inclined to take option door number three. And that was the cellular hotspot using a VPN just to make sure that everything is honky dory and nobody can tap into anything. Um, and also make sure that you set up two factor authentication on all these accounts. Uh, you can also some, you can use a Google authenticator app, which some banks and credit unions are allow you to use now, which is better than two factor authentication. Uh, and just keep track of every little thing that you can as you're traveling. Make sure that um, I have I have alerts on all of our bank accounts that if a charge is made without the credit card or, uh, you know, somebody's trying to transfer money that that we um, that I get a notification. And so this way, when you are traveling, that if something does come amiss, that you at least are notified automatically of it, right? I mean, so right. you're not sitting there $500, thousands of dollars later saying, you know, I should have set that up. Okay, no, we don't want to do that. But, you know, answer to your question and, and save travels to you is to make sure that you use a cellular hotspot along with a VPN. George, thank you so much for your call. You know, when you're traveling, I want you to do what I did. You want to drop an Apple AirTag in your luggage. And so that this way, when the airline loses your bag, you can help them find it. But there's one area where an Apple AirTag in your luggage just will not work. Anybody? Anybody? When it's deep down into the airport's conveyor system. But I recently traveled to Europe, and I put an AirTag in each of my bags. And it really gives you, like, peace of mind. Like, yeah, I know exactly where that bag is. All right. Let's see who's next. Oh, hi there, Carl. Hello, how are you doing, Kim? Fantastic. How can I help you? Yeah, I I was going through some drawers and stuff around the house, and I discovered I've got hard drives and stuff. I've been in electronics for a long time. And my first computer was an 8-bit processor. It was wow. a Commodore PET. Wow. <laughs> and, but I've got some hard drives and a couple other things I'd like to destroy before I throw them out. Right. I've heard of people doing all kinds of things, but uh, I have no clue how I want to do it. I'd like to find me one of those grinders and grind it all up, but that's well, not happen. You know, you can use a grinder and, you know, if, if, if <laughs> I mean, but I'll tell you, if there's a hard drive that I want to destroy, I mean, and I, re I mean, I'm talking about I really want the data to be gone for good, is that you, yeah. you do, you have to shatter the platters, okay? And yeah. You got to take a, a hammer to it and you just keep going until that thing is all to shreds. 
I mean, you can use, um, like, there's D-band and there's Eraser. If you can still, you know, if these are hard drives that you can actually put into an enclosure and uh, a USB enclosure and then plug it into a computer so you can use a utility to wipe the drives, you know, you can do that. Uh, but if it's truly, like, financial sensitive data, I, I know it sounds crazy, but I will give a computer away to somebody with enough money that they can go buy a new hard drive uh, if, if the computer still is in working order. Again, the utilities are called Eraser and D-Band, but there's nothing like a good old hammer to get your frustrations out and to destroy the uh, older hard drives for good. And thank you for your call today, sir. You know, there are always these stories of hard drives being sold on eBay for like, really cheap. And then when somebody, whoever buys the hard drive, they look at it and they see all types of data on it. So you want to make sure that you really destroy a hard drive before you get rid of it. And speaking of, you know, there were two FBI agents, they searched an office and they found a hard drive with KGB on it. Yeah. And one of the agents asked the other one, why didn't they just write one TB instead? Get it? KGB, one terabyte. I know. If you have to explain it, it's just not funny. I wrote the definitive how-to guide and it's up right now on Amazon as an ebook. And so just what you want to do is just go onto Amazon, just search for my last name, Commando. We've got a whole slew of ebooks, but the one that I'm talking about just got released is your guide to online freelancing, setting up your own business. And you can find that on Amazon. I think it's less than 10 bucks. Just search for Commando with a K. All right, so many people are using password management programs because let's face it, who wants to remember all these 12, 15 digit passwords? Well, a really popular password management program is called LastPass. So it will store addresses, passport, and credit card numbers too, along with your passwords. Well, it appears that they have been hacked. Some bad news. An investigation says that no customer data or encrypted password vaults were compromised. And they say there's no evidence that this has even happened, that it was really their proprietary LastPass technical information, sources of portions of their source code. Hmm. All right. If you're using LastPass, I want you to go ahead and change your master password right now because hackers may have information that could expose it later down the line. So again, go ahead and change that master password as ASAP. And if you're looking for more tech news, don't forget 24-7. We post breaking tech news and more tips and tricks over on my website. That's with a K, of course, commando.com. Hey, thanks for listening to